Hi, I'm Nadine Nelson. So happy to be here. Uh, creative in residence this year with New Haven Public Library. I am the chef, owner, and artist of Global Local Gourmet, which is an interactive culinary education company. And I'm happy to be here with my friend and colleague, Catalina. She's one of my favorite people in New Haven. She has the best cupcakes and confections. I love that she has interesting flavors, but then she also bakes um, delights from her culture. So hopefully she'll talk a little bit about that. And so I'll have her introduce herself. I'm gonna be making pies. And this is part of, um, we're having a pie party on Monday um, to celebrate my cover in Yankee Magazine, but also an organization called Peace Through Pie, which celebrates the life of Martin Luther King to such a wonderful thing as pie. So in preparation for that, I thought it would be fun to make pies. In the past, when we've had pie events with um, City Seed, or last year when we had this event for the Institute Library, um, Catalina always allows us to come and make pies because they usually pop up. So, I just thought it would be fun for her to showcase her talents as a wonderful baker. Well, hi, I am Catalina Regelman. Uh, I have, uh, let's see, I started baking when I first started coffee here in New Haven. Um, let's see what else? I wanted to be the first cupcake store for the bakery just turned nine this past October. And it's uh, evolved into more than cupcakes. I do, um, like Nadine said, my parents were born and raised in Budapest, Hungary. So I have some Hungarian desserts that I love to uh, bake and they've been going very well. Uh, what else do you want to know about me? Well, we can start soon. Mm -hmm. All right. And so then um, I'm going to go over there. And I'm going to be in the back because a lot of times we're making pies, pink up the pool and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be sauteing some onions. I'll let um, Carolina talk about technique as she's making her pie and I'll come back. But while she's talking, I don't have to ask questions. <laughs> um, I made some pie dough earlier this morning and uh, I have taken it out of the refrigerator. So I'm going to cut it up. And today we're going to make a, one of my favorite pies is a sweet potato pecan pie. So we're going to make individual ones today. So, um, and the pie dough is a very basic pie dough, your flour, your butter, I do a tiny bit of sugar and a little bit of salt, some water, and that's about it. You always want to make sure you have flour on your table so you don't stick to your table. Wonderful rolling pin here. Yes. I was thinking about making patties. I was just getting for cleanse because you can do it with butter, you can do it with Crisco, you can do it with heat. Anyway, so what are the differences and then why do you, what's the secret to your crust? Um, I use, I only work with 100% butter. Um, that is because I don't like Crisco, but I did make this year. I had a customer call and uh, wanted me to make something that she had seen on the great British baking show, which was fun. And that was with the animal fat, which was interesting because I never worked with. And that came out really super flaky and delicious. I was surprised, um, tried something new. But for me, I, uh, I love pure butter. Got it out flaky, tender. Yeah. You said these are personal pies. How big are these going to be when they're done? Um, they're going to be baby pies. 
So I am making, I guess they're three or four inches. Okay. And I use a six inch high tin to cut out my circle. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you could see the thickness. Mine is a little bit thick, which I like. And then I place it in my high tin, press it down. And then you could form whatever way you want to make your, your the crust on the outside on the top. You either fold it in. I just like to run my finger or pinch it. I've seen crimping it with a fork too. You could do, yep. Do whatever your little heart desires. One. And this is going to be a one crust pie, right? It's going to be a one crust pie. Yep. So I'm just going to roll out three of these and then we'll get into making the uh, sweet potato filling as well as the pecan that will go on top. Because um, I love pecans and I love sweet potatoes. Yeah. I'm a very big nut person. Anything with nuts in it, I very much enjoy. What did you say, Catalina? I'm a nut person, so anything with nuts in it. Walnuts, You're a bit nutty, pants, hey? You know, almonds, pistachios. Pistachios? I don't do, uh, no, pistachios. I don't do pistachios unless I'm just nibbling them. My own consumption. Yeah. Well, the one thing that's super fun about owning your own bakery is that you get to make whatever your little heart desires at any time. So I always have lots of fun stuff when I go to Trader Joe's. I buy all these weird, funky ingredients, and then I come back and make things up as I go along. Mm -hmm. That's, That's the best way to cook. Yeah. There are very few recipes. I know a lot of people say with baking, you have to be precise. Um, I have not done that. Uh, there are very few recipes that you can't mess, like you can't uh, have the liberty with. French macaroons are one of those. They're very particular. Um, some of the Hungarian desserts and some of uh, like my Big Newtons, I weigh out the ingredients. Um, the whoopie pies. Yeah. yeah. I love the onion. Um, I don't like the chocolate. Well, when you make stuff or buy stuff from like that, you've got so many ingredients and you can't even pronounce what you're eating. You wanna show? No. Yeah. Like, right here is Ooh. a pie crust that you can get at a store. And because I'm not very pastry adept, <laughs> uh, even though I study pastry in Paris, I always say it's like, uh, I feel like if she knows what she's doing because she has a finger peel and all that kind of stuff. You do, it's like my mom making dumplings. Yeah. It's like, she can, it's like, okay, dumplings for 50, dumplings for 10. Can you um, stir that around? And they always come out right because you, you've been doing it for so long and you, and you you feel it in your hands. So um, so this is just one pie crust. And then this is a little bit of um, fig jam. And I've cut up some apples. Um, or I'm about to cut up some apples. I'm sauteing some onions. I'm going to caramelize them. And it's going to be an apple and blue cheese and onion tart. 
Mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Dinner. A mm -hmm. little bit of savory, a little bit of sweet. Yeah. So I poke some holes in it so it doesn't puff up. So those are there. We're going to set these aside and we're going to now work on sweet potato filling. All right. So what we have here is fresh sweet potatoes, one and a half cups. Again, I baked that off this morning. But we feel like better when we um, bake it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so much better than when you um, boil it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Turn them out. You got one and a half cups of uh, sweet potato. Again, baked, and then I put it in the mixer and kind of made it like a mush, like a mashed potato. We are going to add a quarter cup of sugar. We have some cinnamon, allspice, and nutmeg. We have two tablespoons of, here we are, here we are, of butter. Get that going. Crack my eggs, so. Add the egg in. Flavoring, so you add that in. Break Right, so we've got this done, and now we're going to make the, the filling. And so in here, I don't know if you can see, we got some corn syrup, some cinnamon, uh, two eggs, melted butter, melted butter. Get a plate 
screen. Um, I shall. And it's not really all that hard. You just have to believe in yourself. And even if it doesn't come out looking like a star store bought one, that really doesn't matter. It usually tastes so much better. And I added a cup of pecans to it. And what I am going to use, let me grab a cookie sheet. So I'm going to use a cookie scoop. You could use anything that you want as long as it's the same amount that you put in your part. So I'm actually going to do two scoops. About a quarter cup. I'm going to use a quarter cup to put on top. There's a different name for it, but I call it goop. <laughs> kind of push it around so it's even. Overflowing a little bit there. Yeah. It's okay. It'll still taste good, right? Absolutely. Uh, I'm just sticking the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. So my oven, because it's a confection oven, we keep it on 325. If you're doing this at home, you would use your oven temperature at 350. So I am going to do this. And then, so they, if you want to. So I think that you're okay. So you can see I put slices of apple. Oh, that looks tasty uh, already. Pardon? That looks tasty already. Yeah, and then it's just blue cheese on top. Thank you. And this is just stuff that I had in my house. So I want to do one with the stuff I have in my house. So I had apples that we had bought from the holidays that are going bad. I'll make another chart <laughs> this weekend probably. Um, just onions that you always have. And blue cheese, you know, you can have for my salad. Right? And then I'm just gonna put it inside the oven. Let it taste until oh, it's brown. Um, I am in the process of right behind us there is a burner and I am making empanadas and I'm making kind of jerk I don't know what I'm making I'm making a hybrid I think I'm making maybe some just totally meat and onion and then maybe some with meat onion and spinach so that's what I'm making right now what are you doing right now? Okay. An empanada is a Latino hand pie. And so And so I didn't know if I really wanted to make it. Uh, make it sound to the patties. Because it's going to be cool. And I'm just 
think it's and um, you know, you'll take care of the Nadine, I can't hear you very well right now. Okay. So I didn't know if I really wanted to do the padded cells because they have to be cool. I didn't know if we'd be able to do it or if we'd be able to do it in time. So um, I decided to make this one um, instead. And you can get empanada shells at the supermarket, or you can make them yourself. I usually just buy them at the supermarket. Can you buy them at Stop and Shop, or you have to go to a specialty store? You can buy them at Stop and Shop. So these holes are probably part of these are just I started baking when I can see this in the oven with the other one, so it's kind of fun. So I started baking when I opened coffee. Coffee was my first baby on Audubon Street. Uh, I opened it with a friend. And I thought it would be a brilliant idea that we would bake on site. And neither one of us knew how to bake. I figured it couldn't be all that hard. And so I am a self-taught baker. Uh, I went to Wheelock College to become an inner city kindergarten teacher. And while I was in Boston, I fell in love with fitness and became a fitness instructor. So when I came back to New Haven, I um, started my master's at Southern in athletic performance and then met somebody and and became a baker and have been doing it since. So it's going on. I think coffee just turned 26. So 26 years. Yeah. What is the hardest thing about learning to bake? Um, you for know, people for um, at home and when you well, I never baked at home, so I only baked at the, at the business. Um, what was the question? What was the... What was hard? Or what were you all like? What? You know, it, it all seemed to come really easy to me. So my family made fun of me because they would I never knew how to boil water. But whatever recipe I found, everything just turned out golden. So... I never understood. Once I started, I didn't understand people saying, oh, how hard baking is. And it's like, well, I could do it. Anybody could do it. So that's how I became a baker. And, uh, because we opened coffee and I wanted people to walk by and entice them with the smells coming from the building. Uh, and that seems to happen here at Catalina's as well. People would be walking by and they're like, oh my goodness, what are you baking? This smells so amazing. So. So I capture a lot of my business by the smell. How did you transition from coffee? The coffee is actually on their third owner. Um, and then I had a little business in Fairhaven by the name of the coffee pot. It was more of a combination of breakfast food, salads, lunch, and baked goods. Um, that didn't make it. And then, like I had said, when the cupcake came into town. Um, my goal was to be the first cupcake store in the city of New Haven, and that's what happened. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Um, you know, the business is going well, and a lot of businesses are not, so you want to talk about that? So this has definitely been a very challenging time, and um, a lot of my a uh, lot of my business comes from Yale and catering, and so that's not really happening right now. But my community that I have developed over the nine, last nine years um, has been amazing. They've been supportive. Uh, I've gained a lot of new customers. 
uh, I was doing a lot of deliveries in the beginning of the, the pandemic. I was doing um, a lot of um, work delivering food to the frontliners. I was contracted by a couple of different people. Um, that was amazing to see how grateful the nurses were that were getting my food. So, you know, after Christmas business, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving things went really well here for me. And uh, the new year kind of made me realize that I'm going to make it. It's, it. These times you never know if you can make it or not. But again, my customer base has been loyal and has given me and encouraged me to keep moving forward. So, yeah. How was my job creative? Oh, I, like I had said earlier, I get to come in every morning and make up what cupcakes I wanna do. So I get to play with different flavors. I get to play with different ways to decorate cupcakes. Um, I can make muffins, I can make scones, I can make tarts. So it is endless what I could do. Uh, I come in, there's usually a base of what I make on a daily basis, but then the rest of it is just whatever floats my boat at the moment. My day do, does start at midnight, so I'm here bright and early about 1.30. So I get lots of time, quiet time without interruption. In the middle of the night, it's quite lovely. <laughs> yeah. Well, all my so my parents were born and raised in Budapest, Hungary, and they came over in '56. And once the Iron Curtain was lifted, we would go back and visit for the summer. So I guess my freshman year in high school, uh, and the pastries there are incredible. Again, a lot of walnuts, a lot of poppy seed, apricots, uh, what else, mousse. So we've been making a, uh, a, a, a Hungarian bagelies, which have poppy seed and uh, walnuts in it, as well as the dobosh torta, which is a seven thin layers of sponge cake with um, mocha frosting in between each. And instead of having the caramel topping, we have just the drizzle on top. So the one thing about me and Catalina is I don't do anything traditional. So if you're expecting it to look one way because everybody else is doing it, I can guarantee that you will not find it here. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist, but not at the same time. So yeah, so that's that. And how did your... Um... Your exercise, your exercise life intersects with your baking life. So, I attended the fitness for a long time. And I was talking with uh, Nadine earlier that, you know, you need to fuel your body. Now, the being a baker is very demanding. You are picking up 50 pounds of sugar. You are picking up flour. You've got butter. You've got... You know, you're moving and grooving and it's a very physical job. And so for me, um, I've been an instructor for 30 years. So that's just a part of who I am, but it's also given me the endurance and the strength to do my daily job. Also, because I am an all butter bakery and everything is from scratch, it would be considered what people would call clean eating. And all that means is you can name all the ingredients in whatever you make. So you could walk in and ask me, you know, what's in every single one of the things I make. And at this point, I could tell you exactly what goes in all of my food. It's your typical butter, sugar, eggs, the vanilla, your baking soda powder, salt, flour. Um, some of my recipes call for milk, some call for oil, um, you know, co cocoa powder, so having, you know, eating clean 
just means that the food kind of goes through you a little easier. Doesn't, you know, you doesn't need to break down all those chemicals that you would get, say, if you got a Twinkie or, um, you know, another baked good that you turn around and look at the ingredients and there are words that you cannot pronounce. So that's how, that's how that is with the fitness. <laughs> I believe it's a coconut. Oh, I made an Earl Grey cupcake today and uh, had a lavender uh, frosting. So I'd like to go for the unique flavors that other people aren't doing in the world. Uh, I do um, I do a basil, I will, I will do a strawberry and then chop up some fresh basil with a strawberry frosting, uh, a, a vanilla with a pear filling and a, um, a big filling with a pear frosting. Um, we recently had the New Haven Cupcake Contest and the cupcake that won uh, is made with tomato paste, uh, tomato, crushed tomatoes. So it's, uh, huh. it's based on the pizza. So the, the cupcake itself is a tomato based cupcake uh, and the frosting is a caramel to represent the Latino community with a little bit of bacon on top to represent living close to the city, uh, to the water. Yeah. It tastes, you know, a lot of people thought it was pumpkin at first because of the cinnamon and the nutmeg that goes into it. Uh, but yeah, people love it. It's been a great success. So yeah, again, the liberty that I get to take with different combinations of uh, flavors are endless because, again, when you own your own business, you can make it up as you go along. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I have started making more elaborate pastries. And they seem to be moving much better than the cupcakes. So I will always have cupcakes, but have been expanding into different, more vegan stuff, more gluten-free stuff, uh, paleo stuff. So, yeah. So apparently, and this is all just by luck, my vegan and my gluten-free cupcakes, you would never know that they aren't a regular cupcake with the flour and all that stuff. My vegan cupcakes sell very well. So I have a great uh, vegan uh, community. Some of my cookies are vegan. Uh, and the paleo is a big, CrossFit uh, draw, you know, they eat the paleo diet. So I get a lot of CrossFitters come in. So a lot of my fitness people from the gym come in and uh, support me in that department. Uh, you know, when I owned the coffee pot, I did food and baked goods. And, you know, I was good at both, but it's, it's just so hard when you start adding things. So I found that just keeping to the baking uh, works better for me. So no, I don't, I've done that. Don't think I want another restaurant. And New Haven has just so many amazing restaurants that would be uh, hard to create a unique and different menu and experience for people. So. Well, 
I've gotten used to my hours. <laughs> so my hours, if, uh, if people don't know, is my day starts at midnight and I am usually asleep between five and 5.30. Um, it's something that I've gotten used to because I'm nine years in. Uh, I don't really have a social life unless it happens in the afternoon. Uh, and I, I think I kind of like it right at this moment in my life. The next few years, that might change. But for now, I, I like my routine. Uh, the pandemic has given me a little bit of a break sense of the franticness of my days aren't there. I am looking forward to being super, super busy, hopefully sooner than later. Hopefully my, I feel the same way when I hit that stage again. I have a question, Louise. What do you think about baking as a chef? What's your viewpoint on baking as a chef? That's great. And If Nadine is speaking right now, I can't hear her at all. Okay. When I'm baking, um, it's just too limiting. I got to make sure that I have half a teaspoon of baking soda. Is it baking soda or baking powder? My, I'm just not made like that. <laughs> so I prefer to freestyle it with empanadas or stir fry or, you know, stuff like that. Okay. Um, Caroline is doing her dishes. <laughs> So what's the filling in these? Can you show me? This looks really tasty. Do you want to um, I'm going to go look. look. <laughs> I would I'd find the other. Hi. I just well. Sure. A little bit of goop. That's why I like to put them on a high sheet. So in case you have any dribbles, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't end up on the bottom of your oven. And then here's these. Very tasty as well. So there's all different types of hand pies. Um, there's empanadas, there are Jamaican meat patties, there are African meat pies. Um, Jamaican meat patties come from um, Cornish pies that are English. So I like making ham pies because you can just use whatever you have in the house. If you have canned fish, if you have vegetables, of course, we have meat, cheese. So I like them because they're very easy. And we're going to have too much filling, too much filling, and you can just freeze it. So you can use it later. I love beef empanada skins, they're a little thicker. Um, and then you can bake these as opposed to frying them. They come in between sheets. 
And then you put your hand in water and you just do the rim. Grab some of your filling. I just have one tablespoon. As you can see, I can barely keep it in. So empanadas are a really inexpensive and great appetizer. You can serve them dinner as a snack. You can have it with salsa. You can have it with um, hot sauce. You can have them for breakfast. You know, traditional Latin American recipe, and everyone has their own different variation. But it's usually ground meat, some onions, maybe some peppers, maybe a little tomato, uh, olives maybe some capers, maybe some raisins. And then you just close it. Some people put eggs. I do not like eggs in my food. Like that boiled eggs, chopped up boiled eggs. But that's what you like for taking eggs out. No, it's not like, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they chop a cooked egg as a finisher. I don't like that. You know, like for caviar or smoked salmon, you know, like just, it's a, a garnish. Uh -huh. And some people, you know, it adds that a, a kind of flavor, but I do not like that flavor that it has at all. Mm -hmm. so I do not put egg, boiled egg in my food. Okay, oh yeah, you can make sweet ones. Um, uh, a recipe that's very traditional is guava and cheese, guava paste okay. and cheese, white cheese. You can make dulce de leche, um, like we were saying, the caramel, the Latino caramel. Yep, yep. Dulce de leche is also a flavor. Um, you, know, you can make strawberry, you know, you can make different mango and whatever. But usually they're, safe, they're more savory than they are sweet. Hi, Tabitha. Oh, Tabisa, hi, how are you? Thanks for joining us. I think I need a little I'm bit of Hi, Queen. Empanadas and pies. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm just just making so a delicious wow, it looks so good. sweet sweet potato and pecan pie. Oh and God. I made an apple pie uh -huh. with, yeah, Ooh, pie, onion, and blue cheese. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, so I made a mistake, and I don't know how I saved your event, but I, it, I think I saved on Google. Um, and then I went in on Google earlier on, and just no one was getting me in, you know, so I realized that maybe it is Zoom somewhere, but now I just found the Zoom link. But I was all I was going on um, on the Google uh, Meet. So sorry for being super late for this sweet event. Oh, yummy! Oh, it's all right. We appreciate you being here. It's one of those events you can dip in and out too. So yeah. It's a tough day too for me because I'm doing school right now. I'm multitasking. I have like literally three Zoom meetings, <laughs> you know, <laughs> multitasking. I don't want to miss out on any of them. Like, I, like right now, we're just um, listening to the school as well, but it's almost done. And, and then there was another one about funding. And then there's you. I'm like, oh gosh, I cannot miss all these three. I want to see all of them. How can I split myself? You know. So, this is a really wonderful artist from South Africa. You're from South Africa, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone is here. Hi. I love um, the South African National Anthem. Can I have another? Um... Uh, sh it's so crazy. So many languages in there. I still, and I remember what we spoke about the last time. I think maybe we saw it one another. But I still want to get the girls somehow to, you know, do the the song and I mean the anthem but then also just other African music but I don't know with coronavirus that got in the way I've been thinking about it and my daughter figures that I could do a zoom kind of a girls group or something but I'm like I don't know how that's gonna work out you know oh so but, they, um my daughter goes to Yale um she's probably Yale course and they've been online the whole time 
Oh. So they do, they um, break up the voices and they do concerts and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. What, 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 what do they do that? Pardon? What, what do they do that? Um, it Yale, it's um, Yale oh. Music. It's called Morris. Yes. Oh. Okay. I'm going to watch Oh, cool. So tell me a little bit. I hope you guys don't, I hope I'm not interrupting by going back and forth with you. <laughs> what did you ask? Um, so I'm like, I was just saying, I hope I'm not interrupting your flow as I'm going back. Oh forth. no, it's all, it's all about like people, you, you know, asking questions and everything like that. So please. Right. Okay, um, cool. Cool. So this is, this is, you said this is a, or what, what do you call the pie? Sweet, is it a sweet to savory pie? Yes. Gosh, so, uh, so I just made I I'm savory and Carolina's sweet. So I'm gonna put these in the oven and they should be around 15 minutes. Oh sweet. Nice. I think I never do, but we're working on this. Oh, like that? wow. Looks cool. Good. That, that looks, looks amazing. So good. <laughs> yeah. Good thing I've, I've, I've already eaten, otherwise, I'll be salivating everywhere because this looks really good. It does. Totally. I want it to cool a little bit and then taste it. That was fair, pear and Fig and uh, blue cheese, was it? Yeah, it's apple actually. Apple. Oh. I guess oh. for some reason I keep thinking of apple and I mean pear and fig going together. Yeah. So. Um, it'd be a little bit better if we. Um, but cool. <laughs> Want to um, do it napkin? Oh, I took a picture. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> what kind of pies do they have in South Africa to be so? Oh my gosh. Um... We have we have a lot of, of savory pies. I mean, pretty much the pies that we have here as well. But um, I love meat pies. I really love our meat pies as well. I have not had a good meat pie in America, unfortunately, because <laughs> um, I've all every now and then I would crave to have a meat pie, um, like the like, you know, normal steak and kidney pies, and um, what else? You know, chicken pie. But it's just in the way they make them that I find delicious. There's a woman in New York who is a South African who sells South African food. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how she's, she's importing the foods here, um, but she is. And I think she has a deal with, I don't know with whom or what, what company, but they, she brings a lot of the products from South Africa that we love. Like our, like our sausage as well is different from here. I honestly don't like American sausage. I say not the same. So There's little foods that I miss. Uh, little things, um, and I want you know that from from our cuisine in South Africa, like there's something that we call umpokoto, which is not a pie. Uh, it's like it's like a maize meal of like almost like polenta actually. It's almost like polenta. Um, what? Wait, I think it's frozen here. I, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you you can hear me on your end. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go off camera so I can taste this. Okay. okay. All right. No problem. <clears throat> Yeah, we have a lot of pies. I just can't, I don't know what to think of others besides steak and kidney, chicken pie. Um, I know I'm, for, um, I know I'm forgetting some. Um, but yeah, I think the thing, I think the biggest thing is in it's in the way they make them that makes it different in terms of taste. Um, just like here, yeah, there's sausage, Italian sausages, and all the other, other sausages, but it's just not the same as our Buddha Vors. We call them Buddha Vors. 
uh, Buddha um, comes deriving from the word bo, like bo, uh, what they call it, the Dutchman and whatever. But it's really good. It's it, there's, there's a taste to it that's distinct, that's just not found everywhere. So when as soon as I first, when I came here and I ate sausage for the first time, I was like, ew, what is this? Like this candy sausage, where is this sausage? And uh, and so my husband was like, you're gonna have to get used to it because we don't have Buddha wolf here. Um, so I do miss, uh, that's what I miss about South Africa, like certain foods, not a lot, not a lot, but certain food and certain spices, like even our curry, curry spice is not the same as the curry that's in my country, that like in terms of the taste, it's not the same curry. I'm like, this is not curry. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I mean, I will say that because I'm used to my own, um, uh, the, the, the flavors are different, it feels like to me, when even if it's, the, it's named to the same thing, you know. But um, yeah, I'm happy to see you doing some pies. Because I, I made a pie actually uh, two days ago, by the way, um, an apple pie, which I just had now for dinner. But I, it is not it is not as good as what you have there. <laughs> what you have there, because that's delicious. So what did you put with this pie? Apple and um, so, so cheese? So the, um, the pie crust is just a regular pie crust that you can buy. Um, mm -hmm at the store it's a rolled pie crust mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you just roll it out and it's flat circle mm -hmm. and then we have I, I had a little bit of um leftover fig spread that you can get mm -hmm. at you know any supermarket and you can put another jam if you want Ooh. So I have, like a bit like jam as in like a, a strawberry jam or fig yeah or I wouldn't okay. use strawberry. I'd probably use like apple or something that can complement apple. Okay. So it's fig jam. Maybe like a marmalade? Fig. Yeah, marmalade. Ooh, those um, are the two favorite fig in that. There's caramelized onion um, that, you know, we saute. Mm. And there's apple and then blue cheese. And the only thing I might add is um, nuts. So I think that it could do with maybe some walnuts or some hazelnuts. I like the crunch of nuts. Right. So this is a nice, um, right, you know, right. it's like for a brunch or for a lunch and with a salad, you can make mini ones. Um, yes. And then cool. kind of go crazy with the design. You could also drizzle it with honey. Mm -hmm. That would be really nice. And then maybe um, have some thyme also. Oh, to pick it up. That's and nice. Make it a little bit more decadent. That, right, right. That's really nice. Um, that was my, that was my son over here. He's gone now. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so what are you working on, to be so? You know, well, you're creative. What are you working on? Well, I mean, at this point in time. <clears throat> Before coming here, I was um, I was in, in meetings. I was meeting with I was cooking in between, but I was with um, I was uh, listening to a meeting for the kids getting back to getting ready to get back to school, Edward, Edward School. So they are going through the protocols and all of that. Um, but my son is not going to go back, but still wanted to be involved and understand how they plan to do it. And if everything works out, you know, for this term, then we'll send them the next term. We just want to see how others are doing. But right now, I'm also, like I said, I was trying to be on three meetings at one, and then I got lost when I was trying to log into yours. And I think the same mistake I made is with, uh, I think I made the same mistake with the other people that I, I, I wanted to, 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 you know, keep into their meeting. And that one was about funding and things like that. I think I made, I made the same mistake, but um, uh, I've been working on music. I've been working on new music and mostly like just conceptualizing. I want to do, I want to do, like um, not just music. I want to I want to get in a little bit of story in, in a little bit of storytelling, um, but through music and a little bit of acting. You know, even though I'm not an actor, but I want to get into you know like sort of you know. So doing like, like interdisciplinary performance or yes, yeah, okay. yeah perform it, perform it like wholesomely. You know, whether musically on the like, stage presence way, I'm sort of like portraying some of the story a little bit of spoken word like I just want to be fully creative and not just focus on just the singing with the band and then that's it I want to do all of it so I want to tell a story stories different stories some from my life 
but some it's a story that I'm very interested in right now. I'm still conceptualizing how I'm gonna go about the story. It's about it's a very interesting story actually. You know, I'm from a tribe called the Kosa people. Nelson Mandela is Kosa as well, right? So this tri our tribe, you know, South Africa, we have a, like, we like with our anthem, so many languages, because that's just so many people that live there, the diversity, um, and and so many tribes and all of that. So the Kosa people had a had a um, an interesting history not too long ago, you know, around about um, like eighteen fifty six, right? This woman called Nungause, she's known as a woman who caused um, famine where she told the entire nation of the Tosa people to kill their cows their, and their and burn their crops and crazy stuff, right? And, but, and this is like a true story, true story. So this woman, it's claimed that she was a, not even a woman, it's a girl, she was 16 years old who has caused this destruction where people were almost in the entire, the entire Kosa uh, um, people almost died of starvation and, and, and there was a little bit of war between them because of this thing that's caused by this girl where she told people that you, got, you have got to slaughter all of your cows and you have got to, you know, burn all your crops, you know, that way your ancestors will rise from the dead and the white, um, uh, and welcomed guests will not come. And in fact, if they do come, they will die because at that time, you know, the, 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 the British or even maybe the Dutch people, I'm not sure between, between them, but they, they're in the same port. They were trying to invade and still try to get into the, you know, the tribesmen in the, in the, in the, in the rural area, try to convince them, you know, to change their ways and be civilized. Do you know how, we, you know, how our history is? So it was one, one about that time. So they, so she told this, the people that they need to do these things. They need to believe that this is their only way to salvation. So the Kosa people, my poor people, they burnt, they burnt their crops and they, 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 um, they killed their cows. Yes, there was a bit of, you know, clash with others. They said, no ways, we worked so hard, we're not gonna do this. And then the others say this, you know, this revelation or whatever, it's not gonna come true if you don't do it, right? So it didn't, so they did uh, half the nation almost did that, killed everything and everybody was hungry. And then the other ones who didn't kill their crops were blamed because the other ones that didn't have food said that it's because of you, you didn't kill your cows and you didn't burn your, crop, your crops so they started killing each other. It's a silly fairy tale, it, it, it's, like a, it's like, it's not true, but it was, it's a thing that actually happened. So um, so this woman, this child is known for that and she's in, a, she's in our bad books of history. So I wanted to re revisit that story. So I've been Googling, and I mean, not Googling, but no, kind of. And also going to some archives, South African archives, just to find out the story, to see some evidence from the police documents, which show that they've interviewed her. She was a very timid. She seemed, she seemed like she was not okay. That's what I think. So, but I, but I've got so many holes that I see in this story that I feel like there there are a lot of things that are not visited, and I think that people, my tribe people are trying to blame a child for their own stupidity. And and you know. Being a girl, being a woman in those days, you're not really seen, right? And the, and there was a, there was a man who was also integral in playing in playing a part in making sure that these people burn their stuff and things. Who was the uncle of the child? So I feel like he's not he's getting off the hook, and all the blame is going to this girl and her friend who was I think ten years old, or and then and she was fourteen to or sixteen years. So it's a silly. It sounds so silly, but it's such a powerful story because, and I wanted to do a, a one woman act about that. But also just revisit how women are, are, are more or less sometimes are more or less blamed for everything when things get messed up, and then the men get away with them. And also for the fact that they 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 rather accuse a child of such a huge, terrible thing instead of instead of knowing that maybe this child or, or investigating that this child was not okay because back in those days there were incest as well, and and sometimes those who come from incest are not mentally okay because those things are said on the dockets on the police dockets saying that, you know, there, were, there was incest in the family and all these things. So, and, the, and then this police chief said that this child could much and he found it um, unbelievable that she could have been the one, she could have been the one to cause everybody to go through this, you know, and as a child, what, when there were so many adults who can see or, or at least be able to judge if this is true or not. So it's an interesting mess of story that I want to visit and sort of 
play around the idea and and sort of you know act it and write a song about it but also act it out you know so i'm still it's on my board <laughs> that i need to bring that story back up so i've been working on that and other things you know that i'm trying to do with my music i just released my single recently too so um yeah sorry i'm keeping her <laughs> oh, no, no. um what is your single about my single um it's about my um you know it's a very appropriate single right now for um for this pandemic you know it's called sweet sorrow who's that who is this pretty hi. young lady hi i'm nadine's daughter oh my god what's your name go away I think we're frozen. Uh oh, oh, I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. You, we were froze. Oh, there you are. You moved again. You want to say hi? Hi. What's your name? Oh, my name's Soleil. Soleil. Nice, beautiful name. Pretty little lady. Yeah. You are the same age as my daughter. I can tell you are thirteen. Uh, no, I'm 12, I'm turning 13 now, <laughs> almost. Yeah. Almost, yeah, it's pretty much around the same time. My, my daughter is the same age as you, and you almost <laughs> look like her right now. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, my, uh, my, uh, Nadine, uh, my music is, the single that I'm doing is called Sweet Sorrow. It's a, it's a beautiful single. I really, I'm really in love with it. You want to hear it? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it anyway, because... It's it's a little bit it's freezing here a little bit. Why don't you yeah. sing a little bit a cappella? Uh, no, no, thank you. Okay. I can't I can't I can't do I can't do a cappella right now. But it's a beautiful single. It's a single about, you know, it, it's not about a specific thing, but it, it really derives from my pain, it really derives from my struggles when I was back in South Africa and just in general, anybody who can connect to any struggle, whether it's mental struggle or just social struggles that we have to deal with you know and it it, it really takes from that um, from that space and it's a song that i just produced myself for the first time i you know producing my own music in terms of instrumentation and everything which was very interesting i don't even know if i can do that again but um it's it's just it came out so beautifully and and also just a, it's a song that really wants to you know put us back to a space of peace of mind as well even though we can you know, go back to our place of pain and feel all this hurt that we felt in our lives. And also it's a space where it, it, it's a song that really wants to connect you with that pain and embrace it, but then also forgive it and let it go, you know? So it, in that song, it has a little bit of that Sanskrit um, mantra, Om Mani Padme Ham. Oh, nice. Uh, Right, and then you you know that's what it's that, well, in the middle of the song or the chorus maybe people might want might like to call it has that, and then at the end of the song it has you know another like bridge uh, at the end there that's also you know uh, influenced by the, the by the spiritual swing low sweet cheerio <laughs> that song um, it's called, it's sort of like. Um, yeah, I, I took from that as well. You need to listen to the song to understand, oh, what is that? Those are sweet potato pecan pies. Okay, how do we get this? Like, hello? The Catalinas. She's on, um, she's on Whitney Avenue, Lower Whitney by Audubon. Right by, um, they're so Clark. cute. They're so small too, they're cute. Yeah, oh look at the pretty pies that she made this morning. What is it, which part, is apple? apple. We're going to give them about um, uh, maybe five minutes before we dig into them. Maybe, maybe less for hungry people hmm. here. Uh, I don't have ice cream. Hmm. It'll freeze a little bit. I would love to try the. Uh, the um... Here are the empanadas they need maybe a couple minutes more okay i'm actually just going to turn off the stove and leave them in there for a second okay
Oh, is there any more questions? Because I think that um, Catalina is pooped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I, I, I told her when she was doing this, I was like, I know that you go to bed early and uh, I really want you to do this with me. Uh, and so I do appreciate her taking a nap because in less than um, six hours, she has to wake up again. Oh, wow. Why? Midnight. Yeah. You have to bake? Yep. I come in, uh, I, I, my day, my alarm goes off at 12.15 and I'm here by 1.30. Whoa, that's insane. You know, life of the Good baker. Yep. See, I yeah. like to have everything baked from scratch every day. So makes sense. So I'm happy I'm very happy as someone who consumes and you know loves to eat fresh foods, especially baked food. Um, so I'm happy to hear that, but also I appreciate your efforts and you know the energy that goes into it, which we hardly ever appreciate, you know. We just we always demand, is it fresh? Is it fresh? As if as if we we're gonna be up at two o'clock in the morning making that pie fresh for you know for someone. But uh, I can appreciate that, you know. Well I was uh, saying earlier that um a lot of people don't understand that a lot of bakers don't bake from scratch. They have um, they bake from mixes and then some of them they feel like it's okay because it's a, a high-end mix. It might be from France, but I could do that. I want to come into a bakery where I know that, you know, I saw, you know, Catalina's like mixing stuff by hand. Right. You know, all her right. crust, everything is made from, from scratch. So I love that. Right. Wow. Kudos. You come in, you smell butter and sugar. Oh, you guys could smell everything that's in here right now. It's incredible. Right. And the pecan pies are like amazing. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Look at those pies, you see that? <laughs> you guys just had a pie, but it's not as good as that. Oh my God. Is that uh, Sule? What, what's her name? Yes, yes Sule. Yeah. I could see the little hands. They look like my daughter's hands. Like, you know that age, they're pretty much the same age. Can I see your face, Sule, again? Oh, look at that pie. Hi. Hi, that, that's my daughter over here that you were reminding me of. <laughs> She's like bailing. Whoop. How old is your daughter? 13. 13. Yeah. She's 13. Yeah. Deloitte turns 13 in August. Oh, so is your, daughter, is your daughter going on 45? 45? You know, like 13 going on 45. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. As in she acts older than she is. Oh, oh, <laughs> sorry, Dad. listen, you gotta treat me, okay? <laughs> the terminology, girl, <laughs> from another planet here, okay? <laughs> kind of, a little bit, no, no, just, 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 she likes to, to she, I sometimes feel like I wanted to go a little bit to 45, but, you know, but yeah, no, she's not, baby. She's actually a year older than your daughter then because she was born in September, right? Yeah, yes. in August. Yeah, <laughs> she's they're laughing at my math skills. Is she a is she a Virgo no, too? I'm sorry. Is she a Virgo? Um, no, no. I'm Libra. I'm the Virgo here. That's September twenty seventh. So. Oh, yeah. that's funny. So I'm the Libra and Soleil's the Virgo. That's an interesting mix, right? I know, I know. Also, but, but the thing is, I, I, okay, this one has like a FOMO issue. Like he feels now left out because no one mentioned his age and no one mentioned his, you know, sign. <laughs> He's like, can you tell, can you tell them? <laughs> He's a Scorpio. <laughs> he just wants to get involved. <laughs> ah. So, yeah, but I always think that Libra, I'm, I'm like, I'm, we're like right there on the cusp because I'm 21 of September 21st and yes. you're 27th. Hey, tell me! Okay, honey, you are so Can you handsome. see that? Oh. And on some oh. things, it says Sorry. that she's a Libra and some things she says, it says that she's a Virgo. Yeah, she's it, like, it's so right close. There. And sometimes whenever I, whenever I read on, on, uh, on, on Virgo, I mean, on Libra, I always think that it, it really talks to me. Oh my gosh, it's being that served. Oh my word, that, that's okay. a sweet potato. Right. Mm -hmm. What's the bakery again? Oh. 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 Oh
That's a troublesome. I'm saving. I'm saving mine for um, vanilla ice cream because I need to have it just perfect. <laughs> yep, I'm saying. I, 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 like, um, like I said, I baked a pie, and which is obviously not as good as yours, guys. But um, it's all I could do <laughs> for them, and. I just want to have it with ice cream. I just want to have it with ice cream and I want to have it melting and want, want it hot still so it can melt a little bit. That's my perfect version. Just have it hot enough and warm enough so that ice cream, ice cream can melt a little. So what do you want to say, honey? Someone is, is a huge FOMO here. What's happening? What do you want to say? What do you want me to say? Tell me what you want to say. You're mad because I didn't say it immediately. All right, have mercy on me. It's bedtime now. Do you brush your teeth? Okay, go brush your teeth. And you're, you're stealing something. That's daddy. No, that's mine. We have these perfect empanadas, the jerk and spinach. It's so good. Asanda, please don't come back here. I, I, I would love for you if you don't, because you're taking things that are not yours. That's not nice. And you're going to lose that. No. My gosh. I, why did I open that door? Okay, that's uh, that's empanadas with spinach. And um, and what again? Just empanadas with spinach. It's, um, um, no, it's, it's jerk, oh. pork, and spinach. Mm. I would love to have that. Oh, my God. oh, today for lunch we had briskets, beef brisket. Oh, wow. Here we go. All right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right. So, What's the way? How, how do you feel? How do you feel? Tell us how it tastes like. You'll be honest. And, you know, you know <laughs> she's not going to say anything to you or do anything to you because, you know what? You got to give us your honest opinion here, okay? The empanada is really hot. I'm just eating the skin right now. The inside's really hot. So I'm going to wait a second. The pie is delicious. I can taste the cinnamon in there. It tastes, very, it tastes very natural, especially the pumpkin. Um, I like how you bake the empanada. Sweet potato. Oh, sweet potato? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I love the sweet potato. I love the feedback, very professional. And um, it sounds, yeah, I, I'm sold, okay? You you have said it perfectly. Do you like cooking shows and baking shows? Cause someone here loves those shows. I don't know if you also into that, you know. I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't hear you cause uh, it was delaying. You watch with your mom. Nice, nice. It, it, sorry, in my I'm 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 in the attic, so I think my network pulls. It, it, it and my network is bad here, but it's the only time I can get a little bit of privacy. But then clearly, I don't have that privacy <laughs> that I was coming here for <laughs> right now. So, so I, it, I I struggle to hear people sometimes. I think we're sense. gonna close out. Yeah. So. Catalina, we can tuck her in and, and, and she can go to sleep. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, I have a couple programs this week. I have um, a make and take. Um, Rose, is there any more bags? There is exactly one make and take left kit left. So if you want, the, the, uh, this kit is home spa. So she's going to be doing uh, bath bombs and a brown sugar scrub and massage oil. We have all the uh, uh, supplies for that. So if you're interested in that, call the library first thing tomorrow, reserve the last kit left. Okay. Right. And, and then also we're going to be doing, um, it's, so it's one hour of making like baths and spa things. And we will be doing like hand massage and, you know, how you can make an at-home spa at your house. And then also we'll be doing spa cuisine at home. So we'll be making right. some dishes where you can get gourmet with things that you already have in your house. Right. And on... Monday for Martin Luther King Day, we're having pieces of pie, and we're going to have Nancy McDermott, which she's a cookbook author and um, writer of Southern Pies, and also Tanya Fields, who is the executive director of Black Feminist Farm, and they're going to be talking about food and activism, right. and the pleasure of pie, 
and Martin Luther King Day. So that is on Monday from to five. So I hope that you will join me. And then also every Tuesday, I have office hours. If you'd like to call and get some advice about creative or artistic projects, I would love to hear from you. It's from 11 to 11.32, no, it's from 12 to two every Tuesday. And you can sign up and find out all the information you need either um, on Facebook or on the library website. Right. Okay. Catalina, so I'd just like to say thank you for staying up. I know this is really hard because I know I go to sleep at 7.30. Mm -hmm. No, really? I'm starting to- well, I don't know, recently. it's not 7.30. I mean, yesterday I went to bed at 7.30, but usually I go to sleep at like around 9, 9.30. I go to sleep early too, but not as early as she does, but I don't wake up also at 12 o'clock. So, 12 um, yeah. so I want to say, I really appreciate you doing this. Catalina Thank you for being has, here with us today. Yeah, Catalina has always supported me and um, fellow business owners. I think it's really important. Right. And um, she's going to be doing for Valentine's Day kits and she did them during um, the holidays. And so where you can come and get cookies and decorations. So make sure you look out for that. I don't know, are you doing the kits this year? Um, I, we'll be, I have it this year, but yes, I've been doing actually individual. I've had uh, individual girls, um, people. So this past weekend, I had one little girl that came in She's going to do a, a, a series of different classes. So we made French macaroons one-on-one. Mm. -on -one. So I do one-on-one. Mm. -on -one, and if you had like a group of girls or a group of kids or, you know, family activity, um, we could definitely set something up. You can right. do you know, pies, you can do cookies, you can do whoopie pies, you can do whatever your little heart desires. Right. Right. So um, next week we have um, James Estrada and he's part of Dream Collective. And we'll be talking about dreams. So um, yeah, we'll be talking about dreams, like what you dream, but then also what you put out there about manifestation. I will definitely be doing cards next week. Um, and so if you want to, you know, manifest and dream up your future and speak it into existence, Carrot this week is a good time to Carrot. come and, you know, breathe it into life. So thank right. you, Rose, as always. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing this. So I'm, I'm glad I could make it. You know, like you say, it's really hard to, to, to just even make it to these things. You, 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 you sometimes press going, but then when it's time for you to actually be there, it, you know, many other things come, you know, come and, and fill up your time. So I was just, you know, happy to finally figure out that it's on Zoom instead of Google Meet and be able to come. You know, I always say that being um, present is very important and showing up showing up to things is very important you know so. thank you for showing up we appreciate yeah. you yeah thank you for doing this i will keep the, the, the programs i will look actually at the library's website to see what's up but i think i think she's interested in the tarot is it tarot card reading as well yeah so next week i'll be like sometimes i do cards at the end so next week because we're talking about dreams i'll yeah. definitely do I'll, I'll definitely do card readings Okay, that's that's perfect. Because my son today was actually talking a lot about dreams because of Martin Luther King and all those things. Wanted to find out what does that mean to have a dream <laughs> and all those things. So yeah, okay. Well, thank you. I'm gonna get. I'm actually you asked again. I mean, I forgot to say what else I was doing. I'm actually doing a video, editing a video for a performance for for Iris uh, Iris Run. They're gonna be doing a run. Um, they do it every year uh, in February this time, but it's going to be virtual. So I don't know what that's going to look like. So that's another thing I, I need to get back to right now. I forgot about it. But um, yeah, so I'm glad to, uh, I could see you guys, you know, in action doing your thing and learning that you guys actually, you know, 12 o'clock, that's crazy. At 12 o'clock, I'm thinking about going to bed sometimes. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm going to go to bed now, you know. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, good morning, everyone. That's crazy. Well, cheers. Good to see you. Thank you. Welcome. Rose? Yep. Thank you for joining us and have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye, Rose. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.